The hair metal babysitters. I remember babysitters. I remember certain babysitters who would come over to watch us in the 80s. I fell in love with them. I was 10, and they were 18 or 19. I wanted to kiss them and talk to them and do things with them that I could not possibly fully understand yet. But the babysitters had boyfriends. Boyfriends who would come over when my parents were certain to be out for a long time or overnight. And the babysitters would walk over to my dad's stereo and reach into their purses and pull out cassette tapes by Cinderella or Def Leppard. And then they would send us to our rooms for bed. And I would hear stuff happening in the living room. Barely discernible sounds under the onslaught of the hair metal. And I would wonder about it secretly there in my bed. And when my parents would get back, they were none the wiser, for the boyfriends would be long gone by then, and besides, the hair metal babysitters had bribed us with candy not to tell, and I liked them too much to get them in trouble anyway. And so then my dad would have to drive them back home, because usually they didn't have their own cars. And he always had a gleam in his eye when his opportunity arose to do this, although to his credit he was never gone for a longer than reasonable amount of time, and the babysitters never seemed to mind anyway. But one time we had a really old babysitter. I didn't have any of the usual feelings for her that I had with the others. She did not like me, and she was not young or pretty. I had no use for her at all, as a matter of fact, and we did not get along. She pulled my brother and sister aside into the kitchen that night, and she told them, There are good kids in this world, and there are bad kids. You two are good kids. Your brother is a bad kid. She did not listen to hair metal. No boyfriends ever came over to visit her. I never heard her making noises in the middle of the night. And when my parents got back, my father was glad that she had her own car. Weed or pot? She was talking about her dealer when I asked her, do you call it weed or pot? I call it weed, I guess, she answered. It was around one in the morning and we'd been at the depot drinking for a while, and then we took a long walk on the Erie Lackawanna to sober up, and there was graffiti on the underwalls of the bridge we were leaning over. We'd made it all the way into Cherville. As we looked down onto the water below, I said, yeah, I guess everyone calls it weed now. It was a stupid question. Pot sounds kind of corny, she said then. I know, I said, but I am older than you. That's for sure. And she giggled. It was our first time out together, and there were many pauses where we didn't know what to say, so we just kept looking down onto that stream as it flowed west. We couldn't see it very well in the darkness, plus the beer buzz, and at that late hour the water's reflection of the stars and celestial bodies above was much easier to discern than the water itself. I debated kissing her as that sky flowed by beneath us. <laughs>